I call to order the regular council meeting of Wednesday, July 19th, 2023. And I'm gonna, do I need a seconder on this? Why do I forget this every time? Yes. Yes, I do. Can I get a seconder? Councilor Johnson. Oh man, for me. The only thing you don't need a seconder on is your uh, adjournment. You know what, I just want them to all feel included. Um, <laughs> item number two, adoption of agenda 2.1 recommendation that council adopts the agenda as presented. Seconded by Councillor Woodall. Thank you. Um, okay. Mayor Beach, could you just slow down a little bit? So we you do work out with time in the open. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous and carries. Thank you. Um, item number three, adoption of minutes. 3.1 recommendation that Council adopts the minutes from the June 21st, 2023 regular Council meeting. Can I get a seconder? Councilman Johnson, thank you. Discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous and carry. All right, item number four, introduction only items none, public hearings none, delegations none, unfinished business and business arising from the minutes none. New business, 8.1 recommendation. Recommend that Council adopts policy 9.1, code of conduct. Seconded by Councilor Woodall, thank you very much. Any discussion? Um, I think last time I had a question, sorry. No uh, last time I had a question, um, because it does refer to our interaction with uh, staff and stuff. Does that also uh, extend to contractors? So people that are contracted, like uh, contract employees, basically. We do the same thing. Okay. Cool. No, I just want to make sure that was so That was, and I think that was the only real question I had when I got a chance to go through it. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor? Unanimous and carried. Thank you very much. All right. 8.2 recommendation. The council adopts the 2022 annual report as presented. Can I get a seconder? Councilor Johnson, thank you. Uh, discussion. I'm just opening it. Is thinking. Yeah, there we go. It looks great. Yeah, it looks really, really, really good. So awesome job to all of our amazing staff at the office. Really, really good. Thank you guys so much. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor? Unanimous and carried. Wonderful. All right. 8.3 recommendation that council adopts the 2022 statement of financial information SOFI as presented. All right, seconder, Councillor Woodall, thank you. Any discussion? No, I just, if people get a chance to take a look at it, it's a good thing for people to see where the money's being spent and how it's being spent. And there was yeah. nothing really that jumped out at me. No. So it was well put together for what I can see. I agree. Okay, awesome job. It's really, really well. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous and carried. One Okay, 8.4 recommendation. Recommend that council receive this report for consideration and grant the variance to Barb Frost. Seconded by Councilor Whittle. Thank you. Discussion, Councilor Whittle. Uh, so, what I've seen is that Ms. Frost wants to add. Some more wording on to uh, headstone of a loved one, and we need to grant this variance so that she's able to do that because it's against our current bylaws. I understand. So she's not, act she's not actually adding to the words to the stone that's there. She's actually asking okay. to put another one below it. Oh, oh that's okay. Great. Okay, so right now in our bylaw it states you can only have the one. Oh, okay. But on things like this, so I've talked to Public Works. They say it's not a big deal. Um, two options right now we're either gonna we're looking at either putting one lower or if she's offered to have the current stone and uh, base lifted and have a bigger one whichever is more convenient for public works she's okay with either of those we're just asking okay sounds good any other questions all right there you go all those in favor? Unanimous and carried. Okay, 
I'm going to give these ladies a minute to catch up because this is the harvest tea thing that ended up just being a total debacle last <laughs> time. Or Miss Stokes was like, seriously, guys. <laughs> so, um, the 8.5 recommendation that council decided that they would like to donate to the Poos Coopy Museum Harvest Tea. Can I get a second there? Councillor Whittle, thank you. Miss Stokes. <laughs> so, there seemed to be some confusion at the last meeting about what they were requiring. So, every year the Harvest Tea is put on, and every year the museum seeks donations from all over the community. So, there was a question about whether or not. Every, some other people had received this letter. Everybody has received this letter. So typically in past years, council has um, made a motion to donate somewhere between $100 and $200. And what they do is they use it to buy a door prize or a silent auction item. Now I did note that you guys, um, that council uh, voted to donate the cleaning fees. If that's what you want to donate, that's still fine. Um, I just wanted to clarify what it was they were looking for. Is that the thing? Have they donated the cleaning fees in the past? No. So normally that we've just redone our community center thing, yes. right? So the cleaning fees are now a thing. Um, if council still wants to give some sort of cash donation, maybe a fifty dollar donation plus the cleaning fees would be. Mm -hmm. And we'll just write a letter to the Harvest Tea and say that that's what council is donating this year. Yeah, and then maybe just show the monetary value of how much yeah. the cleaning fee is. Because it's actually more than what yeah. we would yeah. typically donate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be my question is what's the cleaning fee? Yeah, I think it's roughly three something, isn't it? It is three something. I've read it now. Three, four, two, seven, five. Two, seven, five, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think, yeah, $50. Do a $50 gift card and then the cleaning fees. So the I think it's just $50 and then they purchase a door prize thing. Would you yeah, um, fifty bucks and they do what they want with it? Would you like to make that motion? Yeah, I'd make the motion that we uh, in addition to the uh, rec center cleaning or the community center cleaning that we also donate fifty dollars to the harvest tea for its uh, prize. Seconded by Councillor Johnston, thank you. Discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous and carried. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, 8.6 recommendations. Recommend the council appoints three people to have voting authority at the Municipal Insurance Association of BC annual general meeting as needed. Seconded by Councillor Whittle. So I read through this and they are looking for um, voting members. So they're looking for two alternatives and a main voting member. Um, oh, Ms. Stokes, sorry about that. So typically, the mayor is the key voting mayor or member, and then they put two alternates. So think about uh, UBCM, future UBCMs, who you think will attend and who could vote, because yes. that's who needs to be on the list. And yes, and so I was thinking about that myself, and I would definitely um, like to put my name forward for the main voting member, and then for my alternates. Um, I was thinking about nominating Councillor Woodall and Councillor Rattle. Someone want to second that, or is that a motion? I'll second that. Second by Councillor oh, Johnson. Sorry. Yes. I'm putting my name forward yeah. as the main voter, as the mayor, and then my and then my recommendation for alternates would be Councillor Woodall and Councillor Rattle. Okay. Maybe just. Okay. Not that I'm trying to exclude you, Councilor Johnson. I think okay. it'd be great. But I remember when we when we traveled for the NCLJ and you were like, it's cost me a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and that was seconded by Councilor Johnson. So discussion on that? No. I know we can't really ask Councilor Rattle because he's not here, but um, he didn't show up today. It's volunteer. Yeah, I'm volunteering him. But if at any chance he decides it, that's yeah. his work. We can always right. change it at a later date. at a later date. Okay. Alrighty, all those in favor? Unanimous and carried. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, eight point second and seven recommendation. I'm actually gonna read this. The council received a report on a painted mural mural at the Puskabi Park for discussion. Seconded by Councillor Whittle. Thank you so much. So there is a lovely gentleman in town who has been doing most of the mural work that all the murals that are being restored throughout the community. And um, I have uh, the opportunity to work with him in my other capacity, with my other job. And he is a local to the community. He's from here. 
And um, I thought, you know, it would be so beautiful if we could do a little something with Poos Park so that people can still utilize it for weddings or celebrations. And I just thought a beautiful landscape mural on one of the walls of the grandstand would be really, really nice because if you're going to get married, you'd probably stand up there. And um, so I did approach him and he did create this quote. And so um, I thought, well, I know we don't have it in our budget for this year. It could be something that we look at to look to for next year. And I really want to just have something to kind of present to you guys. Now, the other thing too is that with this park update, I was going to ask, would this meet the requirement for NDIT funding for parks and stuff and, and art? Because I know that they, they do have quite a few parks and, and art grants, right? So we, we may, when that time comes, be able to, to get it covered under that, under like beautification or something, yeah. So I guess my question to you, Ms. Stokes, would be, oh, I'm, okay, so my, my question regarding that would be, would it be easier for me to put forward the motion about looking into grants now or wait until we, we bring it back? Well, I'm not bringing it back. We're not gonna bring it back when we talk about the budget? Why don't you make the motion to have it added to the budget for 2024? Yeah. Oh, that's and I put it on the radar and we worked it into the budget. Okay, before I make that motion, I just wanted to ask one other question. And the grants, I don't need a motion to apply for grants. I need to, I, I that's part of my job. Okay, perfect. <laughs> my next question, I was just wanting just to double check for clarification. Do I need to reach, do we need to reach out to the PRRD before we look into doing this? Is that a shared yeah. space right there? That's our park. That's, that's our, our park. park. That's our park. Okay. Your land at our park. Well, we'll um, take care of it. Okay, well, I would like to put a motion on the floor that um, council include this mural being painted by this mural gentleman, Dawson Creek, to our 2024 budget. Seconded by Councilor Woodall. Any other questions or discussion? None? Okay. Oh, he's breathing, casting, thinking. Just thinking, um, sorry. Uh, once the artist has an idea of what he wants, they're just gonna come back to us yes. sometime next year for us to look at it yes. and stuff. Okay, cool. Well, he generally does like landscapes. That's his thing. He really does a lot of landscapes of the Peace River regional area. Yes. So yeah, so okay. that'd be a great addition. So yeah, well, that was my only. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous in care. Thank you very much. I am excited. All right, 8.8 .8 recommendation. Recommend that council receives this report on speed bump for discussion. I get a seconder. Councillor Woodall, thank you. Um, so while well, so the speed bump thing has been a hot topic, I've definitely heard a lot about it. I've had members of the public reach out to me through social media, um, concerned over the speed speed bumps. And one of their biggest questions is, well, why aren't the speed bumps being put out? So is this a staffing thing just due to we had to cut some of the summer students and and I guess it wrecks the road. So, Miss Stokes? So, apart from damaging the road because we're putting them down, taking them up, you have to drill holes into the pavement. Therefore, in the winter, it freezes, it expands, it shrinks, it expands. It's the, the, the longevity of the roads is being uh, compromised. The other thing is that the way we were doing, apparently they've had a few calls where somebody has called to have a speed bump put down, but then an hour later, the neighbor down the road is calling to say, I don't want the speed bump. And our process is, when we get a call to put it down, we go and put it down, that previous council. When someone calls to have it removed, we remove it, and then that's it. We don't do it again on that road or in that spot. Okay, so if we can't get it together, right? And it is a bit of a pain for public works, as well as our fire department. Racing through town for a fire is mm -hmm. kind of hard. Um, it's hard on the ambulance, especially if they have a patient in there that say they've got excruciating back pain and you're going over a speed bump. Um, that can trigger it. So the public works director has asked me to ask council what direction they would like to take in regards to speed bumps. I'd like to see all Councillor Whittle? So, for one, I don't like the speed bumps to begin with, but is there some places in town where I understand they might be needed because there's people that like to drive like idiots? Well, so, does Public Works or could Public Works make a recommendation back to Council of where they, strategically, where they would like to see them? Because 
but at the end of the day, punching holes in our concrete and pounding up the suspension on people's vehicles is going to cost us. Yes, the, the public works recommendation along with staff because we've had a discussion about it is that the speed bumps go in the school zone and where the parks are. Well then the other thing I would like to think about that from what I heard from residents is the biggest problem areas too are those long stretches of road that could be used to bypass the highway. So drivers hop off the road and they rip down elevator or they rip down 51st or 57th as fast as possible to bypass. And so those are the other problem areas I have heard a lot about. It's those straight stretches where people are coming off the highway and going 80 down the road trying to beat a large truck or a slow moving car or, and they're like, they're driving wild. And so those are the other areas that I have heard. So it was such as railway, elevator, 51st and 57th. What the right. Railway. Yeah. Elevator. Railway. 51st? Yeah. Uh, or street. Street, I think. Um, the one over by the school here. Is that it? Um, what was the other one? And 57th. 57th Avenue Street. <laughs> I don't I don't live here. 57th, it's the one up by um heading up towards the water tower. Does it run north south or east west? Oh, okay. You're killing me. Because if it runs north south, it's a <laughs> yeah, so those were, for residents, those are the streets that I've probably received the most concern about. Okay, well, on elevator, we will not do the gravel, I know that. Yes. Yes. And we have had people call asking for speed bumps in the gravel. Yes, I'm assuming we're talking about the same gentleman. And we can't put them in the gravel because it doesn't work. That's the point. They're just going to come loose and move understand. when they're driving yeah. over them. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just not... You know, they could, yeah. Yeah. Because the same gentleman did reach out to me, and I was like, I'm pretty sure they can't go into gravel house. Yeah, and like our yes. And then at this point in time, we have no future idea of when the road will be paved, which he didn't like my answer either. So. Yeah, he didn't like ours either. Yeah, so, okay. Um, Councillor Whittle? Right. We put a motion on the floor that uh, we install speed bumps as per the recommendation of staff and public works. Mm -hmm. And remove it. And remove the rest. Okay, <laughs> yeah. now your second Councillor Johnson. She's reading it. No, I don't want to add anything. I tried to keep it. All simple. those in favor. <laughs> You know, you're speed writing, like I'm just telling you, it's so good. Alrighty, uh, 8.9 recommendation. That council approves the travel, registration, and accommodation expenses for the CO to attend the CO forum to be held in the 9th BC from October 3rd to 7th, 2023. Are you second here? Councillor Johnston, thank you. Councillor Whittle? So since I was one of the people at the table this last time, my only question at the time was, was this already budgeted for, which has been answered, which has already been built into the budget, so that was my only concern on it. Any questions or concerns, Councillor Johnson? No. I'll make the motion that we approve the budget. Yeah, approve the uh, travel? travel accommodations. And I'll second that. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor? All those in favor? Okay. <laughs> Unanimous and carried. No, you were no, in. Well, you not. were in deep thought there for a moment. I, I wasn't sure. Okay. Awesome. So, do I need to speak very slowly, Miss Grace? <laughs> um, eight point ten recommendation. The council approves <laughs> travel registration accommodation expenses for Mayor Council and CAO up to three thousand four hundred and fifty-seven dollars and twenty cents. Uh, per person to attend UBCM Conference 2023 in Vancouver from September 8th to the 22nd, 2023. Can I get a seconder? Actually, well, I'm going to second that. We're going to go for it. Really I always forget I can second things. I'm like, I can do that. Um, Councillor Woodall, I guess we're going to say the same thing. Um, so a couple things with this. Uh, looking at the cost of this per person and the size of Pooskoopy and how influential Pooskoopy is, 
Um, and no, it's, we're a small community, and I think we're better off, instead of sending everybody down to this, I think we're better off to send the mayor and the CAO only, and reallocate these funds either back into the community or being able to send us to local, more local um, forums where we're interacting with more, more people in the peace region, the people that, you know, we can actually interact with and actually get something done with and work together with. So I'm going to make a motion that we only send the mayor and the CAO to UBCM this year. Seconded by Councillor Johnston. Um, I actually agree, Councillor Bono. I was roughly going to say the same thing, but in a little bit different way. Um, yeah, just I know we all did the NCLGA thing, and while it was a great experience, I know it was difficult for people to take the time off work without pay. And, you know, yeah, that was definitely one of the, the biggest things. And then some members attended more things than others, and so I was just thinking more bang for our buck. Um, I've already spoken to my employer about having the time off. They're well, they're well aware, and uh, Ms. Stokes normally goes. I have to talk to my employer. I'm sorry, but she may have to talk to her employer. <laughs> and speaking, she's like, it might just be me repping everybody, which is fine. I've got enough personality for both of them. All right. So, any other discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous and carried. This year. Yeah, totally. Put it more into the yeah, more local stuff. I have. Well, there's some talk at the regional district side of things. We're looking into getting some more regional stuff. Yeah. At our rate, so, and more northern stuff. All right. Um, okay, now we're into correspondence. So, I'm going to go through so we have to read every single one of them. I have something for 9.4. Does anybody have anything from 9.1 to 9.3 that they'd like to? Okay, so I'm going to read the recommendation 9.4. The council receives the invitation to the World Class A Gold Panning Championships as information. I get seconder. Councilor Woodall, thank you. So this sounds wicked cool, but I can't go because I have family coming up from Alberta. But if you guys would like to go to represent our community. My wife's aunt. Like, are you making up people? <laughs> um, yeah, I I can't attend, but it does sound like such a cool weekend to bring your kids down, competing gold panning. I'm so little, I could just see you in a prospector's hat. I'm going to park later that month, and actually, I'm going to be out of town for those dates. Okay. But I would like to see if you know uh, with their other counselors when I get back, if they might be interested in attending. Yeah. Um, Is there any cost to this? Miss Stokes, no, it's free. I would be able to do the fourth on that. Miss Stokes, would you like me to send an email to the other counselors asking if somebody can represent us? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be that'd be yeah. um, actually. Oh, CC everybody. Yes. Do you mean to make a motion for that, Miss Stokes? Yes. Please. I make a motion that um, staff reach out to the other counselors who are here this evening and see if they would like to go to represent us in the hours. Dead. Steve. Dead. Yeah, so Seconded by Councillor Whittle. Discussion. All those in favor? Unanimous and carry. Thank you. It did look so cool. I was so thankful, but I was like, I totally can't go. Um. Yeah. Just for the record, this is every year. So keep that. It is every year. I know. I'm going to try to go next year. So cool. Anybody want to have anything for 9.5? No. I have something for 9.6. So. That council received the RM BC RCMP report for information. Can I get a seconder? Councillor Woodall, thank you. Um, looking at this, um, I just wanted to add on to this report that um, myself and Councillor Woodall actually got an opportunity to meet with Staff Sergeant Hughes um, and talk a little bit about like the DC citizens on patrol thing and just sort of create that, that local connection. And so we, we did sort of talk a little bit more about these stats and the availability of the Dawson Creek RCMP attending our world action and stuff. And um, we did talk about different ways to increase police presence in the area. So I just kind of wanted to put that for everybody. Just to add to that, one of the concerns that we did bring up with uh, the staff sergeant 
uh, especially with middle you know, school about a month away from starting it is uh, draft enforcement once school starts up again. That was one of the one of the main issues that we brought up. With. Yes. We have been so lucky because we've had a what is he? He's a the gentleman who has been sitting out there who's not oh, CBSE. CBSE. Yeah, CBSE. Yeah, he's stuck up there yeah. He's been wonderful. He's been sort of helping out. So Big thank you to him because he did it like almost all year last year. He would make himself look like a police officer when he wasn't one, but he could still technically do things. But um, and he would sit there in the mornings. He was just a gem, and I appreciated it. So, so yeah, that was one conversation that myself and Council Whittle had this week. Okay. Um. Anybody else have anything under correspondence? No. All right. Ten. 10.1 recommendation. Recommending that council supports the application for the 2023 BC Healthy Community Stage and the Communities Grant. Seconded by Councillor Woodall. Am I making like a thingy where I stand and talk? This sounds very thingy ish. Oh. Ms. Stokes? So, this is a grant that uh, every system is working on for us. And it's going to be in conjunction with our OCP. Uh, to focus on the seniors, and the deadline is like five days. So uh, we had to rush to it when we wrote out the resolution. So basically, if everybody's read it, and we agree with it, and we can make it. How much is the grant for? Yeah. <laughs> I don't 
No, I didn't have anything on that. Do they have any questions about that? So I just want to oh. off you go, Miss Stokes. Just want to make sure everyone saw the update about the bulletin board painting project that we didn't forget it, that we didn't, we will get it done in September. There was just a little miscommunication. We forgot to let them know. There's just a lot going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, anyway, it's kind of a good thing that the person who won is in grade six. She'll be back next year and she'll have all of September and probably October to paint it. So. You know, the nice thing is, is that we're going to have a beautiful landscaping green mural when it's full of snow and well, it's just yeah. going to make everybody feel so much better. Yeah. That's the way I see it. Good on her. I will have a much more detailed report next week. I've been in a lot of meetings this week. Um, the biggest one is the Access Accessibility Act. Um, we are working with the communities to go to the next phase. So we've had two meetings and today we met and we talked about uh, the recruiting for the committees. So there's in the next couple days, next week probably, there's going to be a call put out to the communities asking for volunteers to sit on the accessibility committee. And typically each community is going to have one staff representative and is going to have one member of the community that is a representative. And it looks like what we're trying to do is we're gonna form, instead of each community um, forming their own committee, so that we have nine committees up in the north, we're gonna do a centralized committee. So, and that's why they're gonna pick two people from each municipality. Mm -hmm. And we are probably gonna to lean towards urban matters managing it, instead of us trying to manage it in our offices because nobody really has the staff for it. Um, Urban Matters is going to vet all the applications and then they're going to bring them to a meeting and the CAOs and whoever's in the meeting are going to uh, determine who's going to be on the committee and then Urban Matters is going to work with those committees to let them know what they need to know and oh, there'll be more cool. coming about it so that we can be in compliance with the government for 20, September 1st, 2023. Um, but it's an ongoing project. It's This is just the first phase. The first phase was to get a mechanism, like form these groups, get a mechanism for the committees to get together. And the third part is to uh, get a mechanism in place so that people can um, voice their concerns about the accessibility and what needs okay. to be done. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for that. All right, moving on to 12.2 action items. I did have a few questions about action items. Item number two, Iron Wolf. Have you heard from him? Nope. You've still not heard from him. Okay, Miss Oaks. So I have not heard from him, but they have been doing some upgrades down in the park. I don't know if everybody's aware, but uh, Cam's Cuts uh, offered to do one of our ball diamonds for free. They did a bunch of work in there. They leveled it. They took out old stuff. They put new stuff in. They uh, they had this new machine that they had to test, so he asked if he could donate that service to us. I found out this week <laughs> that the total cost for that project was between eleven and $15,000 to complete. Oh. Wow. And it was donated to us, or oh. to TJ. So, because I had asked him to give me a quote on how much it would be to do the other ball then. <laughs> so he got back to me this week. And I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, we may have to do some fundraising or something. Yeah, if there's a grant, but I thought it would be a good yeah. idea maybe to get them both done so they're both even. Yeah. But, uh, but no, he hasn't sent me a list, so I'm wondering if I can take this off of here. It's um, not my mind. I, I know. I'm. I'm gonna contact him. Give me. Give me to the next one. Okay. And then I'm gonna. On the next one, it's just gonna take it off. Right. <laughs> on on the next one, okay. if, if if that hasn't worked, then we will take it off and we'll okay. move on. Um. Okay. And then the OCP number four. Have you heard about how that's going? So we are about to go into the second phase of consultation with Urban Systems. Okay. There's going to be an OCP 
uh, summary meeting with staff first, and then there'll be a report coming forward to you guys. Probably yeah. sometime in August or beginning of September. Okay. And. So I've updated most of the. Oh, sorry. Oh gosh. Yes, Miss Stokes. So I've updated a lot of this just in the last week because I have actually addressed most yeah, of this. Yeah, that's what I figured. So your wage loss reimbursement policy, I have some information coming forward on that. There isn't really a policy in the municipalities. Um, there, there's one municipality that does a, a not a per diem, it's a, it's a payment to attend a conference. So it's not a total wage loss or wage reimbursement policy. Yeah. If you're there for half a day, you get $100. If you're there for a full day, you get $200. If you're there more than eight hours, you get $300. That's their yeah. policy. So, so far, that's the only policy I have come across. Um, I have actually looked into the alcohol permitting. So what I've done for a lot of these things is I've gone out to all the municipalities in the mm -hmm. north to see what they have. The alcohol permitting, most municipalities uh, run off the BC uh, Liquor and Cannabis Board. Uh, you have to get a license from them. Really what councils do is they give their permission. They give, not permission, they give their blessing to go ahead and have yeah. a good party. As long as they have their liquor license and they're in compliance with everything. Okay. Okay. Um, but I'll bring more on that. I have a meeting next week with Dawson Creek and BC Transit on the phone to talk about possible transit opportunities for Foos. Okay. Uh, the park upgrades, I'm still looking into this one. So I'm not going to say anything about that. Uh, water treatment plant, water reclaim plant, I'm still waiting for some dates. Uh, the map to the ministry, I still have to look into that because I'm not, I wasn't here for that, and I want to see just exactly what it is they're looking for. Okay. Um, the Rural Transit Solutions Fund that I was asked, or you guys asked about, the deadline to apply for that grant was October 7th, 2021. Oh. And there is no more for 2023. I looked to see if there was any more coming up right now. There is nothing. For the rural transit solutions fund okay so i've looked into that um do you want us to move to capitals and then you can upgrade update us on those ones too no nope, i'm not even updating on <laughs> well actually i did a little bit but anyway. um the bylaw report he has redone it with the dates it'll be on the next uh yeah okay wonderful okay thank you Okay, I can give you a brief update on... Yeah, capital. let's move to 12.3, Capital and Special Projects, so... So, the road upgrades, we had... Because we didn't really have many roads to be paved this year, we decided to concentrate on the culvert replacement. There's two culverts that desperately need replacing, one over by Papa Don's and one over by the church here. We are still waiting for some uh, quotes to come in. Oh, okay. okay. We didn't get anybody answer our RFQ. Uh, strategic plan and OCP, as I told you, we're moving into the second stage, and the zoning bylaws on hold till we finish the OCP and the strap plan. The stars donation, the invoice hasn't come yet, okay, so we haven't paid that yet. Park improvements, so I don't know if anybody has noticed, but we posted on Facebook that the park, the Poos Park, was closed this week. Mm -hmm. They are upgrading the park down there. Yay! They have re they redug, they put new wood, um, Parade of Public Works tomorrow, they're hoping to put the mat down, and then the sand arrived today. So they're just making it all secure and more safe for kids to play on. So that is why the park is closed, just in case anybody asks. I had an irate member of the public call the other day. It wasn't very nice. Anyway. Uh, loader has been ordered. I did not have a chance to talk to the public works director to see where we are on that. The cat tail removal, the project has been awarded um, and we're just waiting for them to get started and they're just removing the cat tails around the outer side. I figure that'll give us quite a bit of more room. 
Um, our outflow, outflow meter upgrade is six to eight weeks out because of manufacturer. Mm. Okay. And the phase two development bylaw, the bylaw is finished. I hope to have the bylaw on the agenda on the 16th, but the development permit package is done. We will start posting stuff on um, our website. Uh, just so council is aware, it is a lit, uh, like a working document, so it will always be revised and it's more for staff than the public, but there is things in there that we can't share with the public. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Twelve point four council calendars. Oh, it's that crazy time of year again. Okay. If anybody's going to be away or peacing out, yeah, ah, every time comes a little like me, 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 me. All right. So for July, I'm gone from the thirtieth to the to August fifth. Can we say birthday? Yeah, I gotta go work. I gotta make money. And then I'm also out of town from the 14th to the 28th of August. August. You're missing my anniversary? I'm going on vacation with my family. What was that? What was the second part? Sorry. Oh, from the 14th to the 28th. 14th to the 28th. Yeah. Okay. And Mayor Beach is going to cover my meeting for the PRD on the 17th. Okay. And I can potentially zoom in or call in for the council meeting on the 16th. Mm -hmm. yeah. so missing my birthday, missing my wedding anniversary. Man, so much for 20 years of friendship. Anybody, anybody else leaving? Nope. It won't give me anymore. I was going to be like, I'm done, man, I'm done. I'm just double checking. I don't think I'm going anywhere. I'd like to say I'm leaving for vacation for the whole time, but I'm working the first five days of my vacation. So. Wife approved, too. Just saying. Uh, no, I'm going to be around. So, oh, look at that. Uh huh. It just means summer's slowly winding down. Oh, Ooh, sorry, you got something to add. Uh, the 26th uh, uh, of July, sir. Is I believe that is the broadband uh, internet meeting for the Peace River Regional District. You going to that? Yeah. Yeah, broadband internet mobility meeting from on that day. Yay! And you have said they received any of our emails, phone calls, no, I'll see letters. I'll, I'll see what I find out on that. Pigeons. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> okay, wonderful. All right, moving to reports. So, Councillor Johnston, you're up. Uh, well, I was on vacation for three weeks when I got back. I did a special meeting. And I suffered from my vacation. I've been on late shift ever since I got home, which will end on Thursday. So I haven't really done much now, so I have nothing else to report. No kidding. You've been working, working, working. Okay. Councillor Rabelin, away with notice. Councillor Walls away with notice as well. Councillor Woodall. So, yeah, uh, I've attended the last couple of PRD meetings. Um, also, uh, had a meeting with the staff sergeant the other day with Mayor Beach as well. And I got one thing that I actually wanted to bring up to council and potentially have staff look into for us is with Canada this year, due to the uh, fire bans, we weren't able to do fireworks for Canada. So, is it possible to look at taking our fireworks budget or our fireworks and moving them potentially to like uh like christmas like our old-fashioned old christmas because then we won't have we won't have uh fire restrictions hopefully by then can we do them in that long over there oh so do you need that do you need that as a motion or then it's just something we can look into and bring it back closer to the time. You don't have to look into it. You can do whatever you like. So if you would like to have fireworks at the Christmas event, when we discuss the Christmas event, we'll just have fireworks. Don't okay. feel that one. Everybody still gets their fireworks. Yeah. So typically what happens with the Canada Day fireworks is we would have already purchased them and they would just be sitting. This year, because the fire ban went in so early, the fireworks did not get purchased. So, whenever council wants to purchase 
fireworks. They just need to make a motion and tell us what the budget is, and then we'll order fireworks. Yes, yes. Well, and that's not a good thing to tell us. <laughs> fireworks every weekend. A few hillbillies. <laughs> um, as far as having it in that parking lot, I would have to talk to the fire chief, chief but I believe the reason I'm not having it here is the yeah. Well, and then there's people's dogs, which I totally get. There's always somebody's dog that like has a heart attack, and then that's not very helpful. I can't ask him. Anything else? Um, no. Everything else I can address with an email to the store later. That's what I already have. Perfect. All right. Hi, Darren. Um. Get your writing hands ready. <laughs> On June 22nd, I attended the cross-cultural training with Joy River and the PRRB. Councillor Whittle was there as well. This is an amazing opportunity to learn about the local tra traditional culture and the history of the peak. And I'd like to thank all those that made, made that day happen and available to all of us so we could attend. Dopes. Can I ask if they asked you for like any type of payment or anything? No. I know. They didn't. Thank you. They, didn't have they, haven't reached, they haven't reached out to me to pay for it yet. So. I don't know what's going don't on. Don't ask, don't tell. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'll, I'll, get a, I'll get a hold yeah, of Mr. Bob instead because they all did it. I attended on behalf of the regional district. Yes, you went to the PRRB, but I went for us. So you got to make sure you go to Councillor Wall, right? That attended? Um, well, Councillor Wall was attended the for the morning. He left, by, he left after lunch. So he ate lunch and then he left. So. Um, Okay, June 26th, I met with the museum staff and the curator regarding the Canada Day float and the school tours that they have going on there. Okay. Councillor Woodall did that as well. Really, he just followed me around for quite a while. If I remember correctly, I was there first. <laughs> that was too bad before me. I would like to say a huge thank you to the museum who kindly invited myself and council to walk with their beautiful float on Canada Day. Um, the amount of work that Mr. Day has put into that float and the replicas is kind of it's unmeasurable. It's amazing. And um, I'd just like to add to you guys that um, Council and myself have been invited once again to walk with the museum float in the Dawson Creek Fall Fair parade. Um, so with that, I have spoken with the museum staff. And they're totally willing to supply all the candy for the Fall Fair Parade, which is great. But they did ask if we had any more of those Frisbees. I reached out to staff, and we can order Frisbees, but they most likely won't be in on time. So what I was thinking is I do actually have a ton of those really cute little prizes left over from Canada Day, like a whole box of them. What if we... Also, where exactly would these prizes be that are left over? They did not come back. To oh, are they in there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I do not have 27 happy sacks at my house. <laughs> um. well, you, have, you have about 100 Frisbees that you can take. Well, I'm thinking we, we could use the leftover Frisbees from Canada Day we have the and the leftover prizes yeah. and, and hand those out. So, if it comes to the table. do I need to put a motion on, on the floor for that? Or? Or I'd like to put a motion on the floor um, that council would use up the, the remainder of the Canada Day Frisbees and prizes with the museum at the Dawson Creek Fall Fair Parade. Seconded by Councillor Johnson. Any discussion on that? I think it's cool. All those in favor? We're going to have out toys. We're going to be the coolest float ever. But, like, this is about kicking butt. Um, also, I'd like to add, I did go in and talk to them and say something about the tours. They have a bunch, they were doing a bunch of school tours and stuff. So a bunch of different schools were going in and giving tours, and the children loved it. The feedback pages are phenomenal. So he had six when I was in there. Well, Mr. Davis was telling me that uh, they had the silver come all the way from Chetwin. Yeah, from Chetwin came out to do a tour. So it's pretty exciting. So they, they had quite a few schools go through, which is really, really great. So awesome job to the summer students and our museum curator for all their hard work they're doing amazing. Um, June 29th, I met with Mr. Cameron to pick up and organize the children's games for Canada Day. 
Um, he was so great, though his seed can scares me because it's full of spiders, but he was wonderful, as always. And then July 1st, we all attended Canada Day. Well, except for one of us. I know, he was fully in town. Um, attended Canada Day, and I worked with the Pooskabee Public Library and the museum to organize and host the children's games. <laughs> Are you laughing? Or am I no, I was coughing, but I just remembered something that Councillor Waddell forgot to say in his report. Oh, he never, it, they, for, they forget all the things. This is why he forgot about them. getting dumped. I know. He was dumped for almost 30 minutes. So I'd like to give a huge shout out to our library director and our museum summer students for all their hard work on Canada Day. They worked like with me the whole day. And I'd also like to take time to thank our amazing staff for all their hard work. You guys work so hard and were so dedicated to Canada Day. And you all work diligently to put together Pooskibi's biggest celebration of the piece. So thank you all so much. You guys did an amazing job. It was wonderful. You did a great job. And everybody had a lot of fun. And they love the dunk tank, so that way we, we should just buy our own at this point, set it up up front. We've been there, there will be a report coming in August about costs and stuff and how much we raised and recommendations and everything. Well, I just want to make sure the community knows that all the accolades and praise needs to go to you guys. You all worked so hard, and that was amazing. On July 6th, I attended the community champions meeting and received an update on the new hospital and the upcoming OPS center via Zoom. Um, and so we just talked about a few concerns. There were definitely some concerns coming from um, the Dawson Creek um, mayor and council. The OPS center on June 30th before it closed down had like well over 300 members using it. And then when it closed down, they've only been able to continue access to 10 of them. So then that does elevate our risk for overdose and drug related deaths. So that is definitely a big red flag that's happening right now in Northern Health. They are trying to get a mobile unit and this person is driving around looking for them, but they've gone from well over 300 down to 10. So that's definitely a, a big concern. Um, but they're very hopeful for the new hospital breaking ground and getting that going. On July 10th, I held a special council meeting. And then July 13th, I attended the mayor's and chair's situational update on the wild wildfires and droughts in the area. We are having um, higher than expected drought season. We're already at like the drought expectation what we see in August is sort of already. So, you know, that is definitely a big issue. So water conservation right now is a huge deal. They're really pushing everybody to talk about saving water and being aware and not filling your 12 person pool every two weeks because right now is definitely not the time. And then myself and Councillor Woodall attended a meeting with Staff Sergeant Hughes on the 17th of July. And that's everything. Okay, but take your names. And then that's when he gave us the update about what should be the name. So that's me. I was a busy, busy lady. And so was Councillor Woodall, and you'd never know. <laughs> Thank goodness for me, I'm telling you, some, some things so never change. Keep track of what I do. <laughs> I'm telling you. This is my calendar I show up. Oh my goodness. Um, I better make a note of that. Alrighty, so, 14 question period. Nobody's here. 15 in camera, none. 16 rise and report, none. 17. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, one thing, um, I guess I'm just sticking it now. Is I'd like to congratulate Miss Stokes on uh, her new uh, full-time position as the CEO, no longer intern. Yeah. So congratulations and welcome to the job you've been doing for the last two years. <laughs> very nice. Very very nice. Good job. Awesome. Yes. Good point. Thank you, Councillor Wills. So we're going to move to adjour um, adjournment. Would you make the motion to adjourn? Okay. Do I need a seconder? No. I'm telling you, it kills me.